Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Man, I have got an amazing upgrade to add to the truck today. One that I've wanted since, off and on, since I was 18. And I've got it in this box right now. And I want to share it with you. I haven't even opened the box yet. So we'll do that together. I'll show you, explain to you what this is, what it does, and maybe if I can pull it off, we'll get this thing installed. So get over here so we can get this box open. So inside of this box is a Made in America, made in America, made in America NP205 stainless steel twin stick kit from JB Customs. I really wanted one of these for a very, very long time. Check that out. So before we rupture a disc pulling this massively heavy transfer case out of the truck by ourselves, I want to give you a quick overview of this kit. You know, show you what it comes with. Super nice, really impressed. Look at them welds. It just doesn't get any nicer than that. Stainless steel, nice bronze bushing on the actual pivot, so we'll never have to worry about corrosion or anything on this uh, set of shifters. Also came with a custom shift boot to accommodate both shifters. Nice heavy, some sort of foam slash rubber. Looks like 16 gauge or, I don't know, eighth or 16th of an inch stainless steel brushed with a peel coat on it still, so, so it doesn't get scratched in shipping and we can do the scratching ourselves. Pieces that hook to the actual shift rail on the transfer case are stainless steel along with the actual shift linkage which is got the ball in so you know it should be lined up good and make this work really smooth. So I'm extremely excited to install this kit and I picked this up just like anybody else. Not a paid endorsement. Got it off of a website named after you know the river in the jungle. So let's slide up under the truck and see if we can't snatch out this transfer case. So we'll get our Country Boy Creeper rolled out here and slide up under there and see if we can't get that thing out of there. Ah, get in the pan. So I'm sure this front drive shaft slip yoke is supposed to be like this. Just an extra clearance that they built in from the factory. So one thing you did not do <laughs> is put this truck in four wheel drive and then just drive down the road like normal. It would shake you out of the truck. So I've got this transfer case loose all but one bolt and after going over multiple escape plans out from under this truck, none of which made sense with a heavy transfer case sitting on my chest, I decided to recruit some help so Elizabeth's going to operate the jack and I'm going to be under there trying to finagle this thing down and hopefully we can, hopefully we can do it without removing a kneecap or busting a spleen. Yep. Watch out, Bobby. Please, I don't want to crush you or myself. Okay, bolts are out. Let's see if maybe you can pull back just a little bit. Oh, keep coming back. Bobby, get him out here. <laughs> it's coming out. There we go. There we go. Let down just a little. Just a little, please. I'm going to try. Here. You're fine. All right. Oh, we got it. Okay. Now pull back just a little. Straight back. There you go. Let down. Just a little. Bobby. Just 
keep going. You're doing fine. Never go fast. Yeah, like yeah, that's fine. Bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pull back just a little. A little more. All right. Keep going down. A little bit faster. Keep on going. Touchdown. There we go. That was easy. Pull it out there, love. It's fine. No big deal. Thank you. That went surprisingly well. Thank you, love. Transfer case out. You want to scoot it this way? Heavy side. I don't know. This may be too heavy for you. Probably is. What side? To be honest, it? this side's going to be the lightest. I can probably handle can most of it. If yeah, we can see. I can't. If you can't, then you can't. That's all right. <laughs> well, we'll use a cherry. I'll set it up there with cherry picker. So one of the big reasons why I love working on this old truck is because, no joke, this is the tools that are required to pull that transfer case out. That's it. So like I mentioned, I'm really pleased with the construction of this set of shifters and, and all the hardware that they sent with this kit is really nice as well. But if I can knock this kit for anything, and I'm gonna, it is the clarity of the instructions and the poor quality pictures. Now I've looked at a lot of drawings and there is a lot of room for improvement uh, in, uh, in these two drawings here. Although there is enough information here to get the job done, you know, for a guy who's done a lot of work, for the new guy who's you know, questions every step that he makes, these are going to have him a bit confused. Although they do uh, give a link to a video there that you can go to, and I did watch that as well. But for the guy who doesn't have internet out in his shop, for the cost of this kit, they could have definitely included a really clear drawing here, you know, and could have done this quite a bit different in order to clarify exactly what you need to do in order to make this kit work the way that it should, because it does require pulling a shift rail and modifying it. So that's my knock on this kit, is the clarity of the instructions. So I'm removing the ball detent that holds this shift rod in position. So we'll remove this bolt. Yep, there's the spring. We gotta get the ball out of there as well. There's the ball. Now we gotta push in what looks like a little freeze plug, but it's just an access port that allows you to install a roll pin that holds our shift fork that's inside the case to this actual shift rod. We have to remove that in order to get our sh shift rod out. And we'll just not simply knock this plug down inside of the case and then we'll drive the roll pin out. It'll fall down in the case as well. And then we'll retrieve those before we reassemble this through an access port on the side of the transfer case. So let's knock out this freeze plug and then we'll drive out the roll pin as well. So let's get our roll pin lined up with our access hole. There it is. Oh, 
There we go. Pin fell down in the case. So now I'm going to reinstall the punch through the shift fork and the rod and try to remove this shift rod without my shift fork falling down in the case. So I'm going to pull on the shift rod and slowly back out my uh, punch here until my shift rod comes out, but yet it's still stuck in the fork enough to hold that in position so it doesn't fall down in the case. A little twisting is what helps, I guess. Okay, so there's our rear shift rod. Not in very good shape, really. Kind of corroded out here where the seal rides and the seal over the years has vibrated and rubbed a notch into this thing. Now we could easily make this if we had a, some three-quarter inch drill rod because that's all it is. Just a piece of shafting with some features in it you know, that are easily, easily machined manually. But seeing as I don't have any drill rod and, uh, you know, we're doing a modification anyway, let's go ahead and machine this. I'm just going to set it up in the milling machine, although you can use an angle grinder for this and probably 99.9% .9 of people do. I have a milling machine, so we'll just mill these two ramps according to the instructions a little wider. And in the future, we'll either, you know, make, borrow, steal, a set of shift rails for this thing. I'm just kidding, I'd never borrow any. You get the idea. Chances are we'll just modify this, stick it back in here, and never touch it again. But it really needs a set of shift rods. So there's our before view and our after view and all we're trying to do is mimic what they've done here and on the drawing they call out on this end here for it to overall be an inch and a 30 second long so all i've done is took my rule here marked it out on the blue there is no no reason to get too crazy with precision here because they actually show doing this modification with an angle grinder and most people do so the rule is perfectly fine so we've got it marked out inch and 30 second there that's where the top of our ramp will stop, and then similar modification on this one, both moving the ramps towards the inside. So, I'm going to go get set up on the milling machine, and we will bzz, bzz, and hopefully be done. I have got to get that big duo milling machine together. I can't wait to use that thing. Let me show you my setup. So about as basic as a setup as it gets, held in a collet block in the vise, 3 8 end mill. Just going to touch off on this flat face here, run it up till I touch my mark, which is an inch and a 32nd from the end, and, you know, flip this thing over, meet the required dimensions on the other side, and it's, and it's done. That, that easy. Probably good enough on that side. So now I have to do the exact same thing to the other side, except differently. And, and this will be done.
So there is our modified shift rail. Good thing about using a 3 8 end mill is it gave us the exact same radius that this on our ramps that we had in here from the factory. Just like our after picture there, so hopefully that works. So now I just got to retrieve the pin and the plunger, or the plug, from my transfer case. Then we can reinstall this guy. So there's the hole that our modified shift rail goes in. You can see I've got my punch here, and hopefully we can get you a shot in there, and you can see that that punch is holding that shift fork to where I can line it back up. Because if I pull this punch out, that shift fork can fall down in there. Then you got to try to fish that out. So just a little visual of what's going on there. So in case you've never seen in one of these 205 cases, they're pretty impressive. No chain, you know, cast iron case that's not aluminum, nothing to stretch and break or anything like that. Just big heavy gears to transfer your power to your rear and front wheels. Now, they're not indestructible, like a lot of people say, but they are extremely strong. And hopefully you can see why. Man, they are really well made. So this is the reason why I bought the truck, this and the transmission, because at the time I bought that truck, this case was worth as much as the truck as much as I paid for the truck. So let's fish that pin out and that little plug and put this thing back together. Pin and plug retrieved. So in back in anyway with the modified shifter. I think I got it. Line my pin back up and drive it in. That's kind of tricky. So here's probably the hardest part of the whole job, and that is getting this roll pin back through the shift fork and the shift rail. Because it's so far down in that hole, it's hard to get this held and started without it falling back down in the case. Now, they do make roll pin punches, I believe, that are designed like this. This is just a cheap punch that I ground down the end so it'll fit down onto the roll pin but yet it still hammers on the outside shoulder and doesn't flare the pin out. It's not a tape, real tapered pin, although I didn't grind it all that straight. I did it on the bench grinder. Good enough. So this will allow us to get that pin good and started, and then we can swap punches for the proper, for the proper punch after we get it going in there. Yep, it worked. Put a little plug in. We're done. Now that he's got this kit installed, I'll be able to do some front wheel drive burnouts.
So there's a look at our transmission transfer case adapter, pretty intricate piece of cast iron. And we got a seal here, rubber lip seal that separates the fluids from the transfer case and the transmission. And unfortunately this one's busted, it's rock hard too. So needs replaced, I'm gonna punch that out of there and see if it's got a seal number on it so I can get that ordered. I'm also gonna connect this temporarily to the transmission so I can hook up my twin stick shifters and get the linkage adjusted on them outside of the truck. I just think it'll be easier. So I'm gonna knock this seal out and then hook this thing up to the transmission. there's a seal number on this and we can just track one down and get a replacement so that looks like a national 3968050 all you got to do is type that into a search engine and usually want to pop right up if you're interested in trying to find a seal for yourself usually they're cheap and uh, just a quick search of the part number will make one pop up but that one seals right there or at least at one time it did that's not going to do much sealing, broke up as that thing is. Mm. Perfect. So on a side note, I cleaned up my transmission transfer case adapter, put a new seal in it as well, and the transfer case connects to the transmission through this spline shaft adapter, which is pretty neat. And the seal that I replaced keeps oil from going from one case to the other, or, you know, it leaking out on the ground. So now I can hook the shifters up and give those a try. All right, so fast forward a bit, the NP205 twin stick kit is installed and I am blown away. After shifting around on this thing for just a minute, I can't believe how easy it shifts compared to the old linkage. In fact, I picked up the old linkage off the ground and deposited it in the trash can immediately after shifting this thing. I will never go back to that old, the old linkage. I mean, literally I can shift this with two fingers, which you had to shift this thing on occasion with your foot before. If you own an NP205, you can probably relate. I just didn't want to shift it in and out of four-wheel drive and get it, or get it stuck in neutral, and then have to crawl up under the truck and jiggle the linkage. It was that bad. So this is just a major upgrade, if nothing else, just for ease of shifting. Not to mention, it unlocks the bonus feature that this case is possible of doing, and that is controlling the front end independent of the rear end. So for instance, before, if I wanted the front wheels to pull on this truck, well, the rear wheels had to be engaged as well. There was no front wheel drive only option. But now, with that simple shift rail modification, I can put it in two wheel drive high or low and use the front end. But I still have all of the other features, which is two wheel drive low, two wheel drive high in the rear. Also have four wheel high and four wheel low. It seems kind of complicated, but there is nothing to it. You have a shifter for the rear end, 
You have a shifter for the front end. That's all there is to it. You cannot put these in a position where it'll damage anything. It just is not possible because this thing still has the interlocks in it that keep you from being able to put it into high and low range at the same time. So there is no downside. <laughs> no downside. You got front wheel drive burnouts available now and ease of shifting kit justified. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, when I get this thing installed, I'll link a video up to this one where we do a test drive on it. But I have a lot of work to do till I can do that. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blossom, hoping to break through.